thought I'd do something a little bit different for uh, my Patreon supporters. Uh, so what I did was I put out a question and answer kind of open freeform uh, thing for my patrons, asked them if they had any questions about working in comics or the comic writing process. And I want to just encourage more discussion in general. And rather than just typing out the answers, I thought it would be a little bit more uh, engaging or interesting if I uh, verbally answer the questions. So what I'll do is I'll read those back. I've just got three this time. Uh, hopefully that stirs up more interest in, in people uh, wanting to hear my answers on various subjects or things that I haven't covered in some of my previous blog posts and uh, just cover different aspects of working in the industry. As always, uh, I'll try and be as honest as I can and, and direct as I can, show some examples and hopefully um, help demystify a lot of the process. So the first question comes from uh, Jeremy De La Garza. And it goes, as far as issues go, is there an issue number you would go with to increase your chances if you were an unestablished creator pitching your miniseries? I realized that quality and story are everything, but I didn't know if it'd be better to pitch a three to four issue series rather than a six issue series, or maybe even better to just pitch a one shot. I'm also concerned that if I try to do it in fewer issues than six, it could weaken the story. Just curious what your thoughts are on this and how you would go about it. Um, so that's a, you know, a, a complicated question because it's going to depend on the publisher you're pitching it to and what they might be, you know, up for in terms of their publishing slate and budget. In general, um, I actually think it's better to pitch a miniseries than over a one shot. A one shot may be more economical initially for a publisher, but they can't really put that into a trade paperback, which is the, the long tail profitability most of the time. Those single issues are a way for most publishers to amortize their costs and to um, you know, build up interest in a series, but the trade paperback or hardcover or whatever that collected edition is, is the long tail way they're gonna make money on this thing over the long haul. It's the way they're gonna keep it on the shelves at the comic retailers, convince bookstores to order it, and of course, try and get it in with libraries, depending on, you know, uh, the book itself. So I do recommend pitching a miniseries, um, you know, four to six issues. In general, if a publisher loves an idea, I don't think they're going to shut it down because it's six issues necessarily. An editor might come back to you and say, you know, we don't really have the budget for six. You know, is there any way you can bring it down to five or bring it down to four? But um, if they love the concept enough to publish it, they're going to try and make it, you know, as strong as possible. They're going to try and, and put it in a format that's going to work for their budget and for, you know, your productivity in that way. So I don't think there's any, like that won't be the deal breaker. I don't think you're generally going to see an editor say, man, I really love this concept, but because it's six issues, I guess we won't publish it. We would have published it if it was four, you know, they'll come back to you with uh, feedback. They'll discuss with you areas where, you know, maybe you could trim some elements or uh, subplots or something like that, or tighten up some of these sequences to turn it into four issues or play with the page counts, whatever that might end up being in order to make it work. But pitch the story that you feel is strongest and don't get hung up on the issue by issue kind of breakdown as, as you know, set in stone. If the core idea is great, if it's compelling, if it's engaging and entertaining, that's what's gonna grab a publisher. That's what's gonna grab an editor's attention and they're gonna to wanna to interact with you. And then all the other stuff becomes negotiable. You know what I mean? Like in terms of the format, the release schedule, you know, the deadlines, the budget, all those kinds of things are going to get worked out after you've impressed them with the story. So don't, don't worry about getting knocked out on a technicality. I tell a lot of people this, these kinds of things. You know, there are, uh, if a publisher specifically says on their website, we're not looking for anything more than a four issue pitch, don't pitch them your six issue miniseries or 12 issue, whatever, obviously, right? Like no matter what advice I give you, if a publisher has specific things that they're looking for, then that is gonna trump anything that I, you know, kind of say here. But beyond that, if it's just open call kind of stuff or you're pitching a series in general, there's no harm in, in pitching it as a mini. I do think that you can harm yourself pitching an ongoing series to a publisher, specifically if you don't, you're not a known quantity because that kind of commitment where you're saying, I don't just wanna do one story arc. I don't just wanna do one mini series. I want this, you know, 
at least this promise of, you know, nowadays ongoing doesn't mean what it used to be. It used to be that there was sort of the promise of multiple years of reading to come. But even now, a lot of publishers are going to be hesitant to give more than six to untested talent. You know what I mean? So in a, in a lot of ways, it's in your best interest to come in strong with that cool pitch and, and pitch them a, a great idea um, that gets them excited and makes them want to, you know, build up a working relationship with you. So hopefully you find that, uh, you know, valuable and that makes sense to you in terms of, of formatting here. All right. And then I've got um, for the, the next uh, pair of questions, Paul Salates, I, hopefully I pronounced that properly. Paul has got two questions here. And it says, aside from potential post-art lettering changes, is the script you send to your letterer different from the script you send to the artist? Are there any content or formatting differences? And the answer is no, in general. I will do, obviously, a pass on the script once the art comes in, because there are always going to be minor changes or adjustments that, that uh, are needed. The artist is going to bring an important and, and crucial storytelling sensibility to the pages. And they're going to put a lot of themselves into it. They're going to follow, you know, overall what I'm covering in the script, but find better solutions that, that work visually. Even when I'm recommending, in some cases, uh, potential layouts or, you know, I'm saying a number of panels on the script, I am totally open to adjustment. So I want to see, you know, the strongest pages that they can put together in a way that we both feel is going to, you know, tell the story as strong as possible. But um, I don't change up my script for the letterer because the format that I use, which is the same kind of one that uh, Fred Van Lenty and Greg Pak and uh, Ron Mars use, has a really nice tight structure to it in that every single lettered element has its own separate number on the page. And what that means is quite, quite simply, it's super easy for a letterer to understand and to be able to separate those elements. And if there are edits that are needed later, I don't have to try and describe, oh, it's the second balloon in the third panel, you know, the one on the left or the one on the bottom. All I have to do is just say, you know, we're inserting a new line between elements six and seven, you know, and, and that's the kind of stuff that just makes it way easier on them all the um, all the text is indented a little bit and separated from the panel descriptions. It's really easy for them to cut and paste and then put that into whatever program they're using to letter, whether that's, you know, usually Illustrator, but whatever program that they decide they're going to use. And so I don't have a separate version of my script that I need to put together with just the lettering elements, and I don't have to reformat the thing. I try and make my scripts kind of usable by the whole team. The editor gets what they need out of it. The you know line artist gets what they need out of it. The colorist gets what they need out of it. And the letterer gets what they need out of it. If you know that saves everyone a lot of time and hassle. And I also don't have to worry about version swapping that I forgot to you know bring some element over or a revision didn't get put in there or whatever. So you know as much as possible, the script format that I now use and I kind of really preach to a lot of people. It's not the only way, obviously. There's a lot of different ways to write comic scripts, but it's the one that I've found is best organized in terms of information, brings everything across in a really clear way, and yet is condensed. It doesn't just span out over page after page with tons of line breaks on it. So the short answer to your question is no, <laughs> but sort of justifying the reasons behind that, I guess, uh, is a little more helpful. And then uh, the second question that Paul has is, what are the most time-consuming or tedious parts of getting ideas out of your head and into the script? Um, I'd say probably the outline phase. So an initial pitch is, you know, full of bright ideas and potential. And, and in some cases, you know, you're, you're revealing plot elements, but you don't have to tightly bind every single element of the plot together. We don't need to go, this scene happens, and then this scene happens, and then that scene happens. We're talking about broader concepts of, you know, character development and emotion and, and storytelling. But when we get into the nitty gritty and we've got the approval, and it's great, this project is going ahead. I convince the editor or the publisher or everyone else, this is the right way to go, and I'm the guy to do it. Um, now I have to actually, for me anyways, I'm a structural writer. I really like having the plan laid out. So that transitional period from pitch sort of pre-script 
where I'm breaking this thing down and going, okay, this scene has to happen before that one. These particular elements need to come out in the interactions, otherwise the scene doesn't work, or what motivates this character and drives them from this part to that part. In my head, I knew what the major moments were, and I know kind of the milestones that the script needs to go through or the, the story arc or mini series or ongoing, whatever that format ends up being. I know where I wanna go with it, but now I have to pave all the road along the way. I have to justify how these things all fit together instead of just having these tent post moments of this is going to be an amazing action scene or this is such a cool visual or oh man i can't wait to write this cliffhanger it's all the transitional bits that are going to get us there it's all the it's the hard work frankly you know um anytime you come up with a story in your head it is so pure because it's just the dream of the idea and it's very fun and fresh and and exciting and then once you take those elements and you put them down on paper, and by that I mean type them out or you know whatever format you're using, longhand, writing on a pad of paper, you know typing it, whatever, um, you see all the gaps. You see that you don't have all that information, that you don't know where it's all going to go. And those leaps that you have to make have to suddenly be filled in. And that is the tough part for me. Once I've got that tight outline, it gives me so much confidence to be able to sit down and start scripting and not because I don't have still creative parts to bring to it. If anything, for me, um, scripting is about using that plan and then moment by moment or, you know, like panel by panel as I'm scripting it out and doing dialogue, if I come up with a better way of doing something, a more expedient way or a more dramatic uh, and refreshing way of doing it, I have no problem making those changes in the moment. Um, if they're major changes, obviously I'll contact the editor and be like, oh yeah, that thing I said, we're going to kill that character. I don't want to kill them anymore. We've got a better use for them later in the story, you know, or things like that. But in general, if it's just moment to moment kind of stuff, I'm cool with making those changes and then adapting my plan and sort of, you know, where that stone drops in the water, the ripples go out and, and figuring out where it's going to go. But the hardest part for me is, is filling in those gaps because it's now about, the hard work of justifying and strengthening those those main ideas and making them all fit. I find um, you know the brainstorming process generally you know pretty fun. Like I really love digging in, doing the research, coming up with the big ideas, um, and I really like the scripting phase of like coming up with dialogue and cool panel descriptions and imagining those scenes playing out in my mind. I find those parts really fun. It's the transition between the two where I'm trying to take that initial exuberance and then structure it out for myself before I go on to the scripting. That's the phase that takes me the longest. That's the part where I tend to have the most doubt about my capabilities and all you, whatever, you know, you call it imposter syndrome and all that sort of stuff. Like, oh man, this was such a pure and cool idea. This felt so, you know, easy. And then when I'm actually, you know, putting it together and piecing uh, the thing all into place, that's when I feel like, man, do I know what I'm doing anymore? Do I have the story still clear in mind and, and all that kind of stuff? That's usually where the kind of doubt creeps into the process. And then you just keep pushing through, keep trying stuff out. If it really gets stuck, that's where, you know, you call the editor or talk to a colleague or a friend that you trust about storytelling. And, and sometimes it's just about verbalizing that story or putting all the elements down and looking at them more clearly, getting, you know, asking yourself really important questions about character and plot and, and theme or whatever sorts of things you want to explore and be like, am I losing those core elements that I was so excited about. How do I make sure I get back to that? Or am I being too easy on these characters? Maybe I just need to amp up the tension or, or strengthen the conflict or whatever that might be. Anyways, that for me is, uh, is the tough part of the process. Once I've got uh, that outline and I send it to the, uh, to the editor, then we can break down the nitty gritty. We can figure out all those little pieces. And uh, I feel a lot more confident about where a story is going. And the more of those I do on something like an ongoing series, the easier it gets because I can look back to previous stories and I can go, oh, we've said this about a character previously. 
where are they now? What are their values? What do they need? How can we keep pushing them towards these greater goals and things like that? On a new series, on a new project, that transitional phase can be the really tough spot. Anyways, so those are just three questions about working in the comic industry and the, the writing process for me. Um, I'm hoping I get more, especially after I post this and kind of like, you know, hey, look, these questions turned into actual video. I hope you find it useful. As always, uh, I have a ton of free articles up on jimzub.com and on my Patreon uh, is where you can find a huge archive of my scripts and outlines and other advice. I've got over 250 scripts on the uh, site now, which is kind of mind blowing to me, you know, over the years thinking about how many uh, amazing projects I've had the chance to work on and being able to look back at those and compare them to the published books, I think is uh, pretty valuable for people who might be uh, getting their start. In any case, I hope you found this stuff useful and I hope you're looking forward to a great summer. Take care.